Hello everyone. With this video, I am planning to discuss Grade 6, October 2022 monthly test class paper. You know that always that when you have the monthly test semester exams, so there are so many video sessions with related to the past paper discussion. So then with related to that kind of series. So this is the first video that I'm having for this October monthly test, which you will be having next week. And I know that most of you are waiting for that but without wasting time straight away. I am planning to discuss the paper. And one more thing I want to add that I'm not well these days and sorry about the voice. And please bear up uh, with the voice and try to get the content and see whether you have done the paper uh, correctly. And if you have missed any kind of uh, theory content, so then you can go through this video and try to understand what you have missed and what you have done uh, wrong. Okay, so then the first thing we want to understand that we want to see the marks allocation. We get 95 marks for the paper and 5 marks for the handwriting. And they have given the instructions. Always I advise you to read the instructions properly before going for the uh, paper. So then here they have instructed us to answer all the questions in the spaces provided in this paper. That means you are not allowed to write the answers on the lying papers. Whatever the workings and the answers you want to write in this paper itself. Right. So we will move to question number one. So this is that if you uh, check the other past papers, 2021, 2020 and 2019, always the first question it carries this kind of Simple questions where that it tests your uh, math operation knowledge, which you have gained throughout your primary grades. The first one, it is addition. So then uh, these are very easy that I don't think I want to explain these things that much. So then the answer here, 2 plus 2 plus 2, the answer is 8. By any chance, if you are struggling to get the answer at once, you can have the working column here in the right side and you can add them and get the answer. 9 times 2, answer is 18. And 2 plus 0, that you have two apples and that adding nothing. So then same two apples are with you. So then the answer is 2. So then uh, you have 27 pens and you are giving away that you taking away 27 pens, that how many pens you have now? Nothing, so zero, 27, subtract 27, take away 27. So then the next one, if you can't do at once, you can do it with the steps. So first you do the subtraction, four, take away two, the answer is two, and for that two, you can add eight, and the answer will be 10. So then the next one, 48, you multiply by 0. You know any number you multiply by 0, the answer will be 0, right? So that is the question number 1. Hope that you don't have any doubts. These are very simple questions. And we will move to the question number 2. Again, question number 2 that you have... Uh, the questions, uh, the sub-questions related to the basic math operations, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. That 18 when you divide by 6, that what is the answer, children? It is 3. And from 32, you are deducting 0. That means that you have 32 pins and you are not giving anything. So you have the same 32, so then the answer will be 32. And 700, you multiply by 10. You can hope you can remember, we discussed that how to multiply the whole numbers by 10, 100, and 1,000. And how to divide the whole numbers by 10, 100, and 1,000. So then this easily you can uh, get the answer that the 700, you multiply by 10, you add 0 to the end. Because you have one zero with 10. So when you are multiplying the whole number by 10, you add one zero to the end. And the next one, 528, 
you multiply by 1. The same answer you get, it is 528. And the next one that you can do with two steps if need or else you can do it at once. 4 times 4, 16. Right, so here 4 times 4, it is 16. And 16 multiplied by 1, the answer will be 16. So then here you write 16. Right? So then the next one, a whole number divided by 10. Can you remember that when we are dividing by 10, that we have one zero with 10. So then what we did, that we eliminated the last digit. So then it is 65, right? So then we have the methods of showing the calculations and all. But here you can see that you get only one mark for each question. So no need to show the workings when you get one mark. So then if you can get it, at once that without doing the workings by mind. So then it doesn't matter. You can write the answer. From 320, you deduct 10. What will be the answer, children? 310. You have 20. You are taking away 10. That what will be the answer? 10. So then from 320, you are taking away 10. The answer will be 310. So then the next question, you just see that how they have given the uh, numbers, children, that to confuse you, right? That it uh, sometimes straight away in the exam stress, when you are looking at these questions, that uh, it confuses. Therefore, please be mindful when you are reading the questions that you have the, the specific time duration to do the paper. So then don't worry and the don't be panicked. So go uh, the, the, from the beginning question by question, slowly, mindfully, see what are the numbers you have. 1 plus 111, right? 1 plus 111. That you forget about the 111. 11 plus 1, what is the answer? 12. So the 111 plus 1, it is 112, right? 0 plus 27, that you had nothing, but I gave you 27 pence. Now, how many pens you have? So, then now you have 27 pens. Right. So, then we will move to the question number 3. Okay. So, then this question, it is a very popular question, but they will give you with a different unit values. We'll see how you can do this. For Roman number 1, this is how you want to do, children, that the 30 minutes, right, 30 minutes, you want to write a write as a fraction of one hour. Now, can you keep this fraction like this? No. Why? The numerator, it is in minutes and the denominator, it is in hours. So, then you can't keep them like that. So, then what you can do, you can convert the denominator one hour into minutes. How can I convert that? 30 minutes divided by one hour means 60 minutes Right, so then the minutes and minutes that you have the same uh, the units, so then it will be cancelled. Now you have 30 over 60. You can simplify this 30 times 1 and 30 times 2. Again, I'm telling if you can't the, the, do this simplification straight away, you can do this step by step, children. That first you divide the numerator and the denominator by 2. What will be the answer? 15 over 30. So then you divide this by 3. Then it gives me 5, uh, 3 times 5 and 3 times 10. Then you divide this by 5, 5 times 1 and 5 times 2. Likewise, you can simplify and show the answer if you can't get the simplified version at once. It doesn't matter. But the problem here that it is that one mark question that no point of spending time to do all the steps like that. So then if you can practice these kind of questions at home in the exam, you know. So then how to simplify them quickly and easily. So then we will move to the next question that is the fraction comparison. Now here I will take time to explain this, right? So for that I will move to my whiteboard and I will explain how we can compare the fractions. This is how we can do it, children. Now let's say for an example, you have 2 over 7 and 3 over 7, right? 
Now, if I ask that what is the bigger fraction straight away, you will tell. So, then the 3 over 7 is bigger. How did you decide it like that? That you open the crocodile mouth to the 3 over 7 direction and you tell me that the 3 over 7 is bigger than 2 over 7. How you decided it easily that you had the same denominator and that out of 7, that the 2 pieces are there. Out of 7, 3 pieces are there. So then definitely it should be the bigger one. That if you have something like this, children, that let's say you have... a 1 over uh, 3 and you have let's say 3 over 4. Now can you that do it that earlier what we did looking at the numerator value you decided 3 over 7 is bigger than the 2 over 7. How we could be able to make such a decision because the denominators are same. But here in the second example, that you can't decide uh, that which is bigger and which is that the smaller looking at the numerator value, why the denominators are different. That when you come across with these kind of two fractions to compare which is bigger and which is smaller, that their uh, denominators are different. First of all, what you want to do, Pute, you want to get the common denominator for them. 3 and 4, what is the common denominator? It is 12. Right? 3 and 4, the LCM or the common denominator is 12. You know that after getting the common denominator, how to adjust the numerator values. Now, somehow we have the, the same denominator. No? So, then we want to convert the numerator values to how we are going to do it. So, then 3, you multiply by 4. That means you want to multiply the numerator also by 4. So, then the answer is 4. So, then the next one, that 4, how do you convert into 12? So, 4 times 3. So, then you want to do the same thing to the numerator. 3 times 3, the answer is 9. Now, you can compare the two fractions because you have 4 over 12 and 9 over 12. Right? 4 over 12 and 9 over 12, they're definitely. So, then this is the uh, bigger one. Right? So, then this is how you want to compare the two fractions when you have the different denominators. I will take another example. 3 over 8 and 1 over 5. Again, I told you, now you can't decide which is bigger and which is smaller looking at the numerator values like in the first example. So, this is my first example and this is the second example and this is the third example. You can't decide that what is bigger or what is smaller looking at the numerator in uh, example 2 and 3, like in example 1, because in example 1, you had the same denominator. In example 2 and 3, you have the different denominators. So, then what you are supposed to do, children, you want to find the common denominator for them. So, you know how to find the lowest common multiple or LCM. That using that method, you can find the common denominator for 5 and 8. It is 40, right? So, then I write 40 and 40 here. After getting the common denominator, right? After getting the common denominator, that we want to do the adjustment for the numerator. For that, you want to think it like this. Uh, children, that when you are doing the, uh, writing the answers in the exam, you don't want to draw the arrows and show the multiplications like this. For your easy understanding, I am showing that if you can do them in mind, definitely you want to do them in mind, right? So, here the 8 becomes 40. How? 8 times 5. So, then you want to uh, multiply the numerator also by 5. 3 times 5, it is 15, right? So, then 5 becomes 40. How? You want to multiply it by 8. So, then you want to do the same thing to the numerator. 1 also multiply by 8. So, then this will be the answer. You can see that the 15 over 40 is bigger than 8 over 40. And one more thing I want to explain you that when you are writing the answer that the 9 over 12 is bigger, if you keep your conclusion or the final answer like this, you don't get the full marks, children. Why? 
because in the question you don't have 4 over 12 or 9 over 12. Instead, they have given 1 over 3 and 3 over 4. For our easy reference, we converted them into the denominator 12 and found the answer. And when you are concluding your answer that you want to write the original fractions and show this that what is bigger or what is smaller. The same way that here that you identify uh, that the 15 over 40 is bigger and you conclude your answer 3 over 8 is bigger than 1 over 5. So this is how you want to compare the fractions when you have the same denominator and the different denominators. Now I want to explain you a different concept. Let's say you have 1 over 3 and 1 over 2. Now here that you have the same numerate value. Then are you going to looking at the denominator and decide that the 1 over 3 is bigger? No, we can't do something like that. In example 1, you looked at the denominator and having the same denominator, you looked at the numerator values and decided which is bigger. That is a separate concept. Being example for children, that you have the same numerator, that is number 1, that is true. But that you have the different denominators, that means you have to follow the same steps or the same procedure like in example 2 and 3. But I want to name these two fractions with a different name. All of them have that, the, both of them have that the 1 over 3, 1 over 2. The numerator is 1. So then these fractions we call children the unit fractions, right? What we call the unit fraction. Why we call them the unit fractions? Because the numerator value is 1. Now what you do that you find the common denominator. It is 6 and this is also 6. So then uh, 3 times 2 and 1 times 2. Okay. So then this one will be 2. 2 times 3 and that will be 1 times 3. Okay. So then the answer will be this. Then the 3 over 6 will be bigger. And 1 over 3 and 1 over 2 when you have that the 1 over 2 is bigger. Now, children, I'm going to give you an easy way that when you have the unit fractions, right? When you have the unit fraction, you want to understand, right? Unit fraction, when you have the uh, lower the denominator value, right? Now that the 2 is the lower the denominator value, lower the denominator value, value, right? So then what is the... Conclusion you can get when the denominator is lower, higher the fraction value, right? The lower the denominator value gives us that the higher the fraction value that I will bring it to the down, right? So then I will give you just this, right? So if they are unit fractions, then you don't want to do the conversions and all. Straight away, you can get that lower the denominator value that will be the higher the fraction value here that the when you compare the denominators 3 and 2 the 2 is the lower de the low denominator lower value so then uh, when you look at the overall fraction it is having higher value so if there are unit fractions lower the denominator higher the fraction value. So then those are the things we should know before moving to that earlier question. So then I'm going to the question again. So look at this. You want to compare things. Now that you can see. Uh, so then uh, I will explain this one also. So then if you have something like this, the fifth example, right? I will take the fifth example here. You have uh, 3 over 8 and 5 over 8, no, uh, so 5 over 7, right? So then um, five, no, I will take it like this, uh, 3 over 5 and uh, 3 over 7, okay? Now, the numerators are equal, right? Numerators are equal. But they are not unit fractions. That if they are unit fractions, we know what we should do. But the, now, 
that these are not unit fraction, but I can write these two fractions that in a way that I can see the uh, unit fraction. How? 3 multiplied by 1 over 5. And 3 multiplied by 1 over 7. That means children, both the unit fraction 1 over 5 and 1 over 7 were multiplied by the same whole number 3. Both the unit fractions 1 over 5 and 1 over 7 were multiplied by the same value 3. Now, when you compare the 1 over 5 and 1 over 7, what will be the bigger fraction? 1 over 5. Why 1 over 5 will be the bigger fraction? Because it is having the lower denominator. We know the lower the denominator, higher the fraction value, right? So then when you have that the 1 over 5, it is having the lower denominator. So then this is the bigger one. Therefore, so then this one will be bigger, right? Because why am I deciding it like that? Because that the both the unit fractions were multiplied by the same number 3, you know. So then if you can identify that 1 over 5 and 1 over 7, which is bigger, we know once we multiply both those two fractions by the same number, again, that the, uh, the uh, whether it is the bigger or uh, smaller, that cannot be affected, right? So then the 1 over 5 is bigger than the 1 over 7, as both of them are multiplied by the same whole number 3. So then 3 over 5 will be bigger than 3 over 7. Okay. Hope it is clear for all of you. If you have any kind of doubt, you can uh, comment on the video and clarify the doubts. Now we will quickly move to the sums here. That the part A, I write 2 by 1 over 7. Right. 2 by 1 over 7 and here 2 by uh, 1 over 9. Now we'll just see 1 over 7 and 1 over 9 which is bigger. 1 over 7 is bigger. Why it is bigger? It is having the lower denominator value. Therefore, this one will be bigger. Then you can write this in equal sign with the original values. Then the 2 over 7 will be bigger. Right? So then when you look at the 1 over 4 and 1 over 3, so those are unit fractions. When they are unit fraction, what I asked you to do, look at the denominator value. Well, you compare the denominators 3 and 4. 3 is the lower denominator. That means 1 over 3 will be the larger fraction, right? So then the part D also the same thing. You have unit fractions. So then uh, when you have the unit fraction that the, you don't want to get the common denominators and that the making it complicated, straight away you can make the decision looking at the denominator value, right? So then it is uh, 3 and 5. So then 3 is smaller, therefore the denominator is bigger. Now this one, what has happened? So it seems that the 8 was converted to 24. How? multiplying by 3 and 3 was converted to 9 multiplying by 3. Both the numerator and the denominator multiplied by the same number. When you multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the same number, what you what you will receive your children? An equivalent fraction, right? That means 3 over 8 is equal to 9 over 24. Right? If you are dividing both the numerator and the denominator by the same number, still you will be getting an equivalent fraction. Or if you are multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by the same number, again you get the equivalent fraction. That means they are equal. Right? So then we will move to the uh, next question. Right? The question number four. So this is with the board mass. So we know that we want to uh, follow the math operations according to this instruction, the word mass. Here that we don't have any brackets O of indices, that straight away we have to deal with division, multiplication, addition and subtraction, right? So then see how I'm doing, right? So then if you have not learned this topic, 
from me earlier that whether it is easier for you to understand this and it is easier for you to practice the sounds like this. So what I do children that here that I want to do the division first. 9 divided by 3. The answer is 3. Then here I have a multiplication. 2 multiplied by 3. It is 6. Then I rewrite the question. 3 plus 6. The answer is 9. Okay. 9 divided by 3, 3. 2 multiplied by 3, 6. So in the middle, you have the addition sign. Uh, once you are done with the division and multiplication, you can move to the addition. So then 3 and 6, you add. The answer is 9. So here that you have the division. So then 16 divided by 4, it is 4. And that you don't have any other multiplication or division in this question. So then what I do, I rewrite the question, children. 2 plus 4 and subtract 1. So then 2 plus 4, what is the answer? It is 6, right? So then 6 minus 1, the answer is 5, right? 6 minus 1, the answer is 5. Then the next one. So then the next one here. <laughs> Sorry. So then the 6 divided by 2, right? 6 divided by 2, then the answer will be? Uh, 3, then 6 subtract 3 plus 7. So then 6 minus 3 that you can get the answer 3 and 3 plus 7 the answer is 10. Okay, the next one. Here that you don't have division or multiplication. Instead what you have, instead you have the addition and subtraction. Now see what I'm doing children that I write 4 and 400 because both of them are positive numbers and negative 40 and negative 3 closer. So then the 4 and 400, it is 404. And when you have negative 40 and negative 3, ah, okay, so then we will do it like this. Otherwise, sometimes you will get confused. So then what will happen? 404, you deduct 40, and then you deduct 3. So then from 404, when you deduct 40, what will be the answer that here? 364, right? From 364 that you deduct 3, so then the answer is 361. Children, once you are getting the answers for these kind of questions, before moving to the next question, please uh, double check this, right? So then the first one, 9 divided by 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 and 6, it is 9, right? So then the next one, that is 16 divided by 4, it is 4. Then 2 plus 4, 6. 6 minus 1, it is 5. So then the next one, 6 divided by 2, it is 3. 6 minus 3, it is uh, 3. And the 3 plus 7, it is 10. Yes, so then this one. Uh, 404, 364, from 364 you divide, deduct 3, 361, yes, that is done. So then we will move to the next question. Let me see how many questions we have, that if you, oh yeah, only 10 questions. What I'm planning to do, I will do this video uh, with a, uh, two sections because uh, that if I discuss the all the 10 questions at once that it will be longer. Therefore, I will discuss this uh, with in two videos. So then I will discuss the fifth question also for this video. From question number six onwards, we will take the part two, right? So here you want to fill the blank. So this is a sequence. What you are going to do that you want to identify what has happened. 7 become 10 plus 3. 
10 become 13, that is plus 3. So then 13 become something adding 3. What is the answer? Should be 16. So then the 16 becomes something adding 3. What it is? It is 19. So then the 19 becomes something adding 3. What is the answer? 22. Right? So then first you want to identify what is the gap between each term. So then 7 to 10 it is plus 3. Right? That is 7 plus 3, 10. 10 plus 3, 13. 13 plus 3, 16. 16 plus 3, 19. 19 plus 3, 22. Right? So using the above sequence and your answers, give the numbers that are divisible by 2. Right? So out of these numbers, using the above sequence and your answers, uh, that you want to find the numbers which are divisible by 2. Now, what are the numbers that are uh, divided by 2? Right? What are the numbers divided by 2? The even numbers that which are ending with 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. Those are the, uh, the even numbers. So then here, what are the numbers you can find that the 10 you can take? And 16 and 22. The numbers which are divisible by 2 are the even numbers. How do you recognize the even numbers, children? The numbers which, uh, which are ending with 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. And the prime numbers. What are the prime numbers? The numbers which can be divided only by 1 and itself. That's, that is the basic definition. That, but we can define it in another way. But uh, from your level, the basic uh, thing I can tell you, so then uh, the numbers which can be divided by divided only by 1 and itself. So what are the examples? We'll list down the prime numbers first of all. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, uh, then 19, 23. Those are the prime numbers. We have many more members. But the maximum number we have in this sequence is 22. No? Therefore, I stop there by 23. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19 and 23. So those are the prime numbers up to 23. And you want to keep in your mind, children, the 1 is not a prime number. And 2 is the only even number you can see in the prime number list, right? Two is the only even number you can see in the prime number list. All the other prime numbers are odd numbers. So then out of this, what are the prime numbers you can see? Seven, then 13 and 19, right? So then the next one, write the number which is a multiple of 11. So then how do you recognize a multiple children? So then a particular number you multiply by another whole number. So then the 11 you multiply by 1, it is 11. Then the 11 you multiply by 2, it is 22. 11 you multiply by 3, it is 33. So then out of this, 20, only 22 we can see as the multiple and here that they have, that they see the way they have given the question. Write the number. It gives us a sense that there should be one number. Give prime numbers and give the numbers. So, right? So, when we read the question, it gives us a kind of guidance that whether we have one answer or more than that. Right? So, then the last one, write the square number. You can see here. What are square numbers, children? You multiply a particular number by itself. Right? So, 1 you multiply by 1. Then it gives you 1. 2 you multiply by 2. It gives you 4. Then 3 you multiply by 3. It gives me 9. And 4 you multiply by 4. It gives me 16. And 5 multiplied by 5. 
it is 25. I don't calculate that after that because the maximum number here, I can see 22. Now, you just go through these square numbers. What is the square number you can see in the sequence? It is 16, right? Now, hope all of you understood what I uh, did and how I did them and how I got the answers. What you can do, children, by any chance, if you have not done this video, uh, sorry, if you have not done this paper, first, don't watch the video. First, you do the paper, right? Do the paper and then you can that, uh, check your answers. That is uh, the part two also, that after this, the part two, you will be getting from question number six onwards. So then what you can do, first, you do it. After that, you check your answers watching this video and try to recall the theory concepts. Sometimes you may have not understood them. So then don't worry about that. You go to your textbook and turn the pages and see that whether you can understand it again that uh, looking at the box example. And you just try to understand what I'm telling that you that they uh, watch this again and again and see whether you can understand. Still, if you can't understand, please let, feel free to send a comma, comment under the uh, comment section. So then you can ask that what are the questions or the doubts you have. Okay, children, then keep in touch. So this is 2022 October monthly test pass paper, the grade six one, part one. Part two will be released sooner.